It's not every day that we're going to talk about a new brand entering the Indian market. We are talking, of course, about the MG brand. And today, we have the new head of MG India with us. Uh, thank you for being on the show with us. Um, and uh, let's talk about the MG brand. But before that, let's talk about this new generation of MG. Now, it is, of course, under Chinese ownership. Still very much a British brand in terms of Genesis, but still uh, a new owner, Chinese owner. Uh, tell me what prompted SAIC to choose MG as an entrant for India and not the other brands in their kitty? So as, as, as you know, Cyrus, that uh, uh, SAIC is the biggest Chinese uh, manufacturer and they rank 46th uh, in uh, Fortune 500 ranking. So they're pretty solid players and they, they have global uh, aspirations and they want to expand globally. Uh, they have got repertoire of brands, uh, MG, Roy, Maxis, a few of them. They also have some JV brands and uh, they purchased this MG brand around 10, 11 years back. Uh, before that, the ownership of MG was with BMW, as you know, and before that, Leyland. Uh, so, so SAIC thought uh, fit MG brand as a good fit globally. And as we speak, they have uh, started operations in Thailand. Uh, they have got a new plan for, uh, for MG brand. In India, we are going to be MG, uh, as well as in Middle East, Africa, South America, Australia, New Zealand, uh, are going to have uh, you know MG MG products. So MG is the global uh, brand and product uh, from SAIC uh, SAIC stable, uh, and that's how they are going to sell, um, and that's how they are going to uh, you know be uh, a kind of a meaningful player uh, internationally. You may know that uh, recently the announcement has been made that SAIC intends to sell one million vehicles globally in four or five years time frame and India is going to play a very important role in the international plans. Right. Now the first thing that comes to our mind, most of us in particular, uh, automotive enthusiasts, uh, when you talk about MG as a brand, are all those pioneering British sports cars. In fact, MG, I can safely say MG single-handedly pioneered the concept of the British sports car right. and of course they had a lot of other cars in their range uh, uh, they did go through a slightly tumultuous time in the 70s with Leyland as you mentioned and uh, BMC also but uh, that was the past you're now looking into the future uh, in terms of body style internationally you offer four body styles two SUVs a hatchback and a sedan which is especially for the Thai market correct me if I'm wrong and uh, what's the what's the India plan? Though? What's the first thing that will come to India? As you said rightly, you know about the legacy and about the heritage. Like uh, MG has, uh, MG has got a great story, you know. And and in terms of sports car and cabriolets, they were they were one of its kind, and and it was used by uh, the royal family of London, Brit Britain, and also the various various prime ministers of. Uh, Britain used this car, be it MGA to start with or MGB. MG became very popular, as you know, in TCs and GTs. Um, so the sports dynamism or, or sports, that's, that's the DNA of uh, MG. So we may choose whatever platform of uh, SAIC, uh, but the DNA is going to be MG and in terms of design cues, in terms of uh, in terms in terms of certain values, the brand values, um, MG is definitely going to be dominant in that. As far as our first product is concerned, uh, we are launching an SUV, um, uh, and uh, expect those MG DNA in that product. Uh, what I can say at this point of time is that it will be. Uh, I will try best of its kind in the segment uh, with good features, great price uh, and good value. More than that probably I may not be able to say at this point of time but let's stay tuned for more info on the product. So tell us more about, you said uh, the first product will be an SUV but the SUV market today is not as it was a few years ago. The, the segmentation, sub-segmentations and then segmentations in those sub-segmentations. India of course famous for the sub-4 meter sub-compact SUV segment. Uh, which is something that MG doesn't have globally as a, as a, as a vehicle. Uh, the smallest car is slightly above the 4 meter mark. So is that the one we see first? Is it going to be a sub 4 meter? So, so it's not going to be sub 4 meter. So that's clear. Uh, in terms of 
four plus. Uh, you are right. There are many segments within that, and and sub segmentation is happening at a very fast pace. And SUV overall is uh, one of the fastest growing segments uh, uh, in our in our country, and that's globally true, by the way, also. So so. Right now, we are choosing the right platform uh, from SAIC's table, uh, and it will be difficult for me to say which particular segment. But I can tell you, it's not sub four meter. Okay, great. So that's cleared out. Not a sub four meter SUV. So I'm guessing it'll be slightly larger or something to go up against the Creta. My words, not yours. Anyways, um, moving on to another big question mark in the MG range. Uh, MG today only caters to a petrol audience because, of course, China is predominantly a petrol market. Global markets also moving away from the diesel uh, sort of engine uh, after what happened with VW in particular. Uh, what about India? India still is a big, big diesel market. Do you still see MG bringing in, in, bringing in a diesel engine? And if so, considering the fact that there is an SAIC partnership with uh, VW in uh, China, do we see maybe a VW power plant slotted in? So, so you are right. Uh, over a period of time, uh, the way the global trends are, uh, I think uh, diesel uh, will be a declining segment. I think that's safe to say. Uh, but same amount of time, especially in SUVs and MPVs and the higher segments, diesel is important and relevant in India. So what I can say is that in the relevant segments, wherever diesel is required, we would have a diesel uh, engine in our offering. Uh, uh, Post-2023, when you have stringent norms of RDE and the cost goes up uh, uh, for the diesel powertrain, maybe that point of time uh, the scenes will change. But for the near foreseeable future, uh, diesel is going to be going to remain important, at least in SUV, in the higher SUV uh, segments and MPVs, and and we would have the uh, choice in our portfolio. Right. Uh, second part of my question: Which diesel engine? Um, VW has the SAIC partnership in uh, in China. General Motors, of course, does, and Fiat has one as well. Now we have seen the Fiat engine in the GM cars earlier. Considering the fact that uh, there isn't a direct transition between GM and MG, even though letters are similar, uh, there is this sort of flow over of technology. I can. I, By the I way, I must assume. tell you that uh, uh, that uh, SAIC also has a diesel engine. It's a two-liter diesel engine used in Maxus. Uh, SUVs and Maxxis vans, uh, which Maxxis is a commercial uh, vehicle brand and again it's a British brand which uh, SAIC took over a few years back. So we have, uh, SAIC has a diesel engine, uh, but again there are partners and there are various other powertrains available so we have to make a decision of what is more, uh, what makes more sense for India uh, which helps us uh, in achieving the right uh, uh, cost as well as uh, the quality. So, so still we haven't taken a decision yet, uh, but what I can uh, tell you is and confirm that wherever diesel engine is required, we will have diesel engine in that segment. Right. Now, next year will be the launch of the, this first vehicle, the first SUV. That brings you perilously close to the uh, BS6 uh, deadline of 2020. It gives you about a year's breather. So, do we see... Uh, uh, MG coming in directly with a big bang and Euro 6 ready, sorry, BS 6 ready uh, to make it a sort of mission statement? So, so right now our engineering team uh, is working with all the uh, stakeholders uh, to find, uh, to come out with the right solution because it's not only, uh, uh, not only making BS 6 capable engine but also making sure about the fuel availability uh, in all the cities. Uh, the pricing situation, uh, because this is going to be our first offering, so the uh, so the price perception and uh, and acceptance also is very important. So it's a question of many factors which you need to take in mind. So we haven't taken a decision yet uh, on that issue, um, but our engineering team is working on that uh, as we speak. Of course, everybody is looking into the future, uh, be it an auto show, even the Indian Auto Expo, for example. Everybody is looking into the future. The government is very strongly pushing the electric agenda. 
what about electric motors because SAIC has a big big presence in the alternative propulsion alternative powertrain uh, industry in the segment you have hybrids plug-in hybrids electric full electrics etc what is there a plan for India in the near future post 2020 so, so you're right if I can say that SAIC is one of the global leaders in new energy vehicles area be it plug-in hybrids or electric or fuel cell and uh, and they are doing very well as you know in China and also uh, globally they are investing in huge uh, in, in this technology not only in NEVs, NEVs but also on the connected car space. Uh, as far as India is concerned what I can tell you at this point of time is that we definitely are going to be uh, we intend to be one of the leading players in that area uh, but right now there are a lot of unknowns so we are talking to all the stakeholders uh, the good news is that government of India has made it made its intention very clear that that's the future. Uh, uh, people are talking about some optics here in terms of the what's the policy or action plan and things like that, uh, but the direction is very clear. So we are talking to all the players and trying to find more clarity in terms of infrastructure, uh, incentive plan, incentive if any on the uh, on the segment, uh, consumers preference, consumer. Uh, power of or intention of uh, paying some price for this, uh, the battery situations, battery management system and things like that. So what I can tell you right now is that we are pretty seriously doing our homework uh, in this area and uh, we may surprise uh, with our announcement in a few months.